The all-new 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe is a significant departure from the outgoing model. And truth be told, I'm having a hard time finding any significant issues with it. It's that good. Hyundai has been known to offer good value at a reasonable price, and everyone's looking for a square deal. The designers of the fifth generation Santa Fe took this literally outside and in. A huge change from the previous version. Huey Lewis in the news must have been piped into the studio when this was being drawn up. Being square seems to be hip again. We sort of want the sort of classic SUV two-bot style, but we want it in a modern way. I'm at a Hyundai press event just outside of, well, where else? Nashville, Tennessee? Santa Fe is strictly a three-row machine available in front and all-wheel drive. There are two powertrains available, a turbocharged four-cylinder and a hybrid system that's coming this spring. A base SE model starts at $35,300, and yes, that does include delivery. This is the fancy pants model, the calligraphy. MSRP fully loaded, $49.9. A couple inches longer, taller, and wider now, it's about the size of a Honda Passport, which stops at two rows. Since the styling is a big deal, let's dive into that first. There's nothing subtle about it. Yeah, it has a passing resemblance to Land Rover Defender, but to my eye, it's Ford Flex. Form? Meet function. And what we came to conclude was the box shape was the answer. If you create a geometric, boxy-looking shape, you can fit the most amount of stuff. It gives you the most amount of space. There's a reason why Amazon Prime boxes are shaped like a box, so you can fit the most amount of stuff in there. But at the same time, in the cabin space, it gives you the maximum amount of creature comfort as well. It gives you the most amount of space. Channeling Picasso in his cubic phase isn't the only design element happening here. The letter H is everywhere on and in the vehicle. If the late, great Hubert H. Humphrey were alive today, this would be his car. The application of this can be subtle at times. Four dots is the letter H in Morse code. Even the lower bumper section is an elongated monogram. And this is what we call the H signature. And uh, when it's dark at night, uh, you light up the car, you're going to see this bold H graphic. If you're like me, you're wondering, what is this all about? It's a grab handle. Put your hand in to hike yourself easily up to the roof. Nice. Also, this is lockable. A quick note on the XRT version, which is only available with the turbocharged four-cylinder engine. There was an off-road course at the event. I'm focused on the calligraphy due to time. My drive partner, Joel Stockdale, drove the course, which he described as tougher than normal for these kinds of events. So apparently it has some chops. Check out his review at Autoblog. There are five models to choose from. All of the vehicles at the event for on-roading are the top trim calligraphy with the 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. This puts out 277 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. That's a 46 horse and 40 pound foot advantage over the hybrid powertrain. Cog swaps are done with an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. This new controller opens up space on the center console. Manual shifts are quick, uh, not super snappy. The usual Hyundai drive modes are here and easy to select. Order the $1,800 all-wheel drive system and it can be locked. There's also hill descent control. All Santa Fe's get 7 inches of ground clearance, though the new XRT off-road edition bumps that to 8.3. Max towing is 3,500 pounds, rising another 1,000 for XRT. Hybrids are restricted to one ton. You might be thinking, three-row SUV crossover, turbocharged four-cylinder, can it even get out of its own way? Yeah, yes, it can. Zero to 60, seven seconds. The engine is pretty responsive, not a lot of turbo lag. Um, there is a Honda that I would like to pass. Let's see what happens. Okay, no drama at all. Also, the transmission 
kicks down quickly. That's nice. I spent around 120 miles touring the outskirts of Nashville. First impressions? There's little to no wind noise coming off the blocky shape. If you're looking for a sporty SUV crossover, maybe shop Mazda CX-90. Santa Fe is set up for comfort. Nothing wrong with that. This would be a great road tripper. Uh, Hyundai has sent us on some fairly rough roads and the suspension is soaking bumps up nicely. Also, it's pretty darn quiet, nearly luxury car hushed. There's laminated glass in the windshield and the front windows on all trims. Visibility all the way around is among the best I've seen in a modern vehicle. Apparently, boxes are good for seeing out of. Not only does the transmission kick down quickly, it's a smooth operator, the kind of gearbox that you really don't notice on a day-to-day -day basis. I hit a number of large bumps at speed. The structure barely quivered. It's quite strong. When it comes to fuel economy, the turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder that I'm driving here is EPA rated at an average of 23 miles per gallon. So if you want better fuel economy, maybe wait for the hybrid, which is rated at 34. Gas mileage is one of the few gripes I have. Again, this is the top calligraphy build. At just under 50 grand, it gets some upgraded materials like Napa leather. Trim from plastic trees could fool a lumberjack. The average vehicle these days goes for around 48,000 bucks and there's nothing ordinary happening in here. A digital rear view mirror helps when cargo is loaded to the ceiling. The surround view camera system is a cut above the competition in this price range. Storage is off the charts. There's the expected center console with a neat trick. People in row two can dig into it just as easily. And even more than the usual spots like this. And this, that adds a handy shelf for protein bars and such. A medium sized backpack or purse will stash here. And there's a second glove box equipped with a UV phone sterilizer on top trims. I'm trying to think of another vehicle with two wireless phone charge pads. Digital key now lets owners keep their phones in pockets or purses. In short, Santa Fe has features some luxury SUVs lack. And what this is is a fingerprint scanner. So you can set up your finger as the owner or driver of a Santa Fe. In the use case of the valet mode, the valet pulls up the car, you get in, you just scan your finger ballet mode disables and automatically sends you a report of their behavior. And then additionally, you know, we do have our digital key solution, but if you have an older phone that may not be compatible with digital key or a niche phone that, you know, isn't one of the main phones that are supported, you can even use the fingerprint scanner. You can use Blue Link to unlock the vehicle. Get in, if you don't want to carry the key fob around with you, you can scan your finger and you can start up the car and drive away also. I found the heated and vented seats to be especially supportive during four hours of driving, heated wheel too. Hyundai's improved user interface with excellent response is easy to navigate. Most models get two 12.3 inch screens fused to look like one. Thankfully, there are hard controls for things that drivers want to get too fast. Hyundai finally offers wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on its navigation equipped interfaces. And nearly all of the Blue Link telemetric systems are free from a monthly subscription fee for the life of the vehicle, at least for the original owner. The Bose system is one of the better ones with deep punchy sound. Maybe take it in while relaxing in calligraphy's reclining front seat that I want for my living room. It's more comfortable than a lazy boy obviously not intended to be used while driving. Nearly all Santa Fe's get a bench in row two, so there's seating for seven. This is the calligraphy, the only one that gets captain's chairs, seating for six. These get bun warmers for snow belt dwellers. More storage back here, both chairs get pockets. I like the position of the USB ports and that the console gets a second nook down below that's fairly deep. Built-in shades help keep clutter down. Lots of opportunity for hydration. The floor is relatively flat. The dual sunroofs brighten up the space. There's a button on the top of the seat back that makes access to the way back a one-touch operation. I miss that while shooting. This is not an overly large vehicle and that means the opening is kind of tight. That's obvious uh, watching me snake my size 11s through. 
Santa Fe is smaller than the standard Highlander, and the Toyota isn't exactly known for its roomy third row. I am okay back here. I'm five foot nine. Headroom is quite good. Sure, the cushion is low and my knees are up high. That's often the case with three row crossovers, but I would rather ride across town back here than pay for an Uber. This being the Fancy Pants model, there are some amenities, a climate zone, power, and cup holders. It's all here. The people in row two will have to slide forward a little bit. I can put my size 11s underneath the seat, the other one down the middle. And to think this is four inches shorter than the standard Highlander. To be honest, before I sat back here, I was ready to call this space the penalty box, but it's not. It's fine. Santa Fe might look like the block the proverbial chip comes off of, but it's surprisingly slippery to the wind. It's actually a 0.294, which is pretty aero efficient for something like this. It's about 11% decrease uh, from the outgoing model. Um, and it's just as important as, you know, airflow over the top, airflow underneath is equally important. Um, so also, you know, a lot of underbody covers and they manage the airflow underneath as well. When I'm at events like this, I can't do the TP trunk test. I don't think there's a Costco within 50 miles of here. Hyundai engineers are very proud of the cargo opening. It's exceptionally big. And another Easter egg. H marks the spot. Look at the sides of the cargo area and you'll see the lip is unusually thin. Hyundai says this is its widest tailgate ever. Being a shorter sport ute, it's no surprise there are only 14.6 cubic feet with all the seats filled. Uh, storage? Yeah, a bit. There's a space saver tire under here. Hybrids get a repair kit. Row 3 reclines a smidge. Every little bit helps passengers there. The backs drop lickety split, opening up a decent amount of cargo space for everyday use. That's 40 and a half cubic feet. No reason to walk around to the back doors to drop or raise row two. Calligraphy gets motors for that task. Uh, they're not fast, but it's a convenience. This opens up nearly 80 cubic feet of storage. Notice that the floor is board flat, making it possible to toss an air mattress and sleeping bag in here if you're camping or in the doghouse with your spouse. It's very usable. With 10 hours or so with the new Santa Fe, here's my red light, green light take. Green lights. Bold design with more Easter eggs than the Easter bunny. Seems almost bigger on the inside than the outside. Clever features, tech and storage cubbies will keep families organized. And Santa Fe is a good value considering the whole package. Yellow lights, an exceptionally comfortable vehicle. It's not meant for carving canyon roads. The interior has a surprising amount of space, but manage expectations, especially crawling into the way back. I find the blocky styling refreshing, but can understand why some won't warm up to it. Red light. Fuel economy at 23 miles per gallon average is on the thirsty side. Related, the off-road oriented XRT is the only model not available with the hybrid powertrain. And this will be a plus for some buyers. Only the top end calligraphy can be had with the captain's chairs in row two. Normally, only the base model can be had with a bench. Hyundai continues to roll along with impressive products. Interesting that Santa Fe doesn't look at all like any of its stablemates, something the brand does consciously. The only real knock I have with this Santa Fe is that it's not particularly sporty to drive. But then again, there aren't many in class that are. Overall, this is a great value. It has terrific tech. Very good utility, it's spacious for its exterior size. So if you're not considering test driving this, you're only cheating yourself. Not everyone is going to embrace the box it came in design, but Santa Fe is definitely a package that delivers. Did you know that there's a fear of boxes phobia? Casonophobia. This vehicle is not for those who suffer that. I couldn't find a way to work that into the video, so I'm just mentioning that here. If you're interested, I'll soon have a full design video on this rig since it's quite a departure, not just for Hyundai, but most other vehicles. A bonus, it lets you see what I experience on these events. We Speaking of, full disclosure, this is a Hyundai event, and the company flew me to Tennessee, put me up in a nice place, and fed me well. 
I'd be happy to stay at Comfort Inn and eat at McDonald's. I do this so I can talk to the engineers and get early access to vehicles. I'm not afraid to criticize a car. This one just happens to be very good. Before I go, uh, this is not the first time that I've seen this Santa Fe. Back about a month ago, I was lucky enough to visit the manufacturing plant in Montgomery, Alabama. And what's really cool about it is they just seemingly build cars randomly on the same line. There'll be a Santa Cruz and then a Tucson and then maybe a GV70. Both the gas and electric are built in Montgomery, Alabama. If you ever get the chance to visit an auto plant, do it. It's fascinating. It really is. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on social media. If you've got a question, leave it in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. And if you want to support this channel, I support that. You can do it using Super Thanks with YouTube or even better, Venmo. All the information right there. I thank you. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.